What is good you guys for today's video I decided to change up the scenery a little bit different view you know have a little bit of variety um and today I'm going to be talking about what are my top 10 sneakers that I do not have the top 10 sneaker grails that I think are the best sneakers out right now that I do not have if you're not subscribed right now what are you doing go subscribe okay I'm just joking, um, but please subscribe, whatever, all that, just do it. Also, I've been forgetting to do this, but uh, I need to promote my Instagram reselling page. Make sure to check that out. That's going to be right there, 507 Resells on Instagram. Check it out. I do not have a lot of inventory uh, listed right there right now, but when I get home, I will have a ton of inventory posted. As of now, I have like 13 pairs of shoes that I'm ready to resell. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the top 10 sneaker grails that I do not have. And um, even the shoes that I have probably do not compare to this phenomenal list. So a little bit of context. I'm sure you guys have been asked like if you had $10,000 to spend on shoes or like if you had more like $1,000 or like a couple hundred dollars to spend on shoes, what would you buy? And this is kind of like a take on that. Like this is like the top 10 sneakers that I do not have that I am probably never going to spend my money on, but I think that they're going to be, they would be crazy to have and um, basically my grails, I guess. So starting off with an absolute banger, probably, don't shoot me for it, the best shoe of 2019, I think a lot of people agree on that, is the Travis Scott Highs slash the Travis Scott One Lows. Um, these, these are insane. These have been a grail for me for a long time. I am not planning to ever get the highs because those are going for like over $1,300 at this point. What? I know that they're gonna go up. I kind of want to invest in them if I had a lot of money to do that and continue reselling a lot. Um, but the lows go crazy. I am hoping to get a pair of the lows um, sometime soon. Like that's what I have my heart set on now. I'm kind of like saving up, not spending money on like lower level shoes because those are so crazy and I'm a massive Travis Scott fan and it'd be insane to have in my collection. But these shoes are insanely high quality. They're really, really nice shoes. Um, I love the colorways and all like the laces that come with them. The pink, lace, the pink laces go super hard and the details on these like the suede and the little Cactus Jack branding hints are insane. So that was number one and two. Number three on the list is the classic Bread Jordan 1s. These, these are so crazy, honestly like I don't care, any any release, the, the bread ones from uh, 2013, the bands from 2016, I don't, like, these are, bread ones are insane, I hope that they release again soon, because they are so crazy, you can find used pairs for like $350 or something, uh, but like the new pairs are like $700, so I'm not planning to get these at any point, but they are so nice, uh, just, they're, they're an amazing colorway, and uh, the bread color blocking is insane, I personally have um, the crimson tint Jordan ones, those are the same color blocking, and those are my first pair of Jordan ones that I ever had, and um, I, the red ones look so insane. Numbers four and five on the list are the Concord and Bread 11s. Man, have I become an 11s fan. These are so crazy. I love, I've come to love Jordans that are kind of like high tops that are like nice padded and like fit the ankle. I don't know what it is about that, but the way that Jordan 1s and 11s fit the ankle is just crazy. And uh, at first I started getting into breads and I was looking to buy a pair. I could not find a pair that was still icy, but was not brand new for $300. Hopefully I can find some or make a trade for that. And then I became a really big fan of the Concords. I think that the Concords are such a legendary colorway, super recognized. Either of these you can't go wrong with. These are just such classics, they're so nice. But they're both pretty expensive. Hopefully I can get a pair at some point. This is more of a re realistic pair to get, especially if I get them used than some of the other ones on this list. Then you guys will have heard me mention this in previous videos, but even though I do not plan to get these at any point, I just really wish that I did get the Nike Dunk Low Plums that released in I think February, early February. I don't know why I didn't get them. I wasn't obsessed with them at the time. Now I really like them just when they happen to go up to $200 and now $300. Why? I don't know why it has to be like that. But um, the Plum Lows, th these are so nice. I Yeah, I could do with these, but I'm not planning to get them because I do not want to 
spend three hundred or two hundred dollars on dunks, but they're nice nevertheless. So that is number five on my list. Number six on the list is yes, partly because of the name and simply because they're hyped. The Off White Vapor Max. I will admit that, like, yeah, okay, yeah, it's partly because they're hyped that I like them. But at the same time, the design is insane, and I have Vapor Maxes that are not Off Whites, and um, I really like the design in general. So these made the list. The white colorway of these go so hard. I, what can I say? They're really, really nice. In my opinion, I think that they're one of the best off-whites, if not the best uh, to have released. And they go hard, but they're like $700. Maybe you can find them used for like 380 at the lowest. But I do not plan to get these at any point, but they go super hard. I would not mind having them in my collection. Number, whatever number we are now, I think we're at number eight, is the Yeezy 700 V3. I don't know what the colorway is called. I think it's called like the, the boat. No, oh, it's the Azeals. The Azeal uh, colorway that released in December goes so hard. I wish that, I, I went for it at the time, but I wish that I had done more. I wish that I had done like multiple Chrome user jigs and stuff to, to try and cop a pair um, for personal. But they, they're reselling for like a lot. They were originally going for like 500 and now they're going for like 700. And up and um, I don't know they, they look super sick on feet if you don't like these I don't know what you're doing you're entitled to your opinion but I wish I had them in my collection but I don't have the money for that all right number nine on the collection wish list so to speak kind of thing is the bread fours bread fours are so classic I don't really know how I don't have a pair of fours because I love fours um, but I don't like I don't love all fours those uh, the metallic pack that's coming out I'm not a huge fan of, I don't like all fours. I really like the cool grays and the breads and uh, the Travis Scott fours are pretty cool. And um, these are such classics. Every sneakerhead re uh, recognizes these. And um, I hope that someday I can get them in my collection. They're only like, they're, they're not nearly as much as some of the other ones on this list, let's just say. Then last but definitely not least, I actually do have my hands on this pair, but I am currently planning to resell it. Maybe if I can sell one of the shoes that's already in my collection, I will decide to keep this pair. But this is the Yeezy 350 V2 Cinder colorway. This is a super slept on underrated pair. I like these more than the triple blacks, honestly. I love like the muted black on this. They look so good. You know, maybe I can keep it. Maybe I will decide not to because I could get a lot of money off of them, but they go super hard. I. I would not mind having this in my collection at all. This is a pretty good pair. So those are my top 10 sneakers that I do not have in my collection. I do not know what that was, but um, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, there you guys go. Maybe this inspired you a little bit. I think sometimes it's good to have like rankings and grails because then you can recognize like what you like, what you don't like, what do they have in common? Because then you know that you can tell like what you like and what is just hyped or new, then you can really maximize uh, what you're spending your money on and making sure that it's actually stuff that you like and that you are going to like for a long time. Make sure to once again subscribe, like this video, check out my Instagram. I will have great things to come on both my channel and my Instagram. And with that said, we out.